Back to your situation, the Iran Contra scandal. What was going through your mind with all of that stuff? When you looked up and you saw all of that dope coming in, you knew you was moving it, but then you knew you was being entangled with a whole bunch of crazy people. Well, I really didn't know about them until I started trial. Uh. I didn't know, you know, I thought that, that I was a rebel against the government. You know, I didn't mm. know that I was doing what the government wanted me to do. How I didn't did know that Ronald get Reagan and, and George Bush was tied and Oliver North was tied into that. You know, how would I know? I was a kid out of South Central LA. When did I ever think I'd be tied in with the CIA and the White House? And never. When I woke up that morning, one morning I wake up and a dude is knocking on my door saying, man, the CIA director is in the newspaper talking about you. I couldn't believe it. Hmm. And then the next day, uh, Bill Clinton is talking about me. I'm like, wow. What was going through your mind when you seeing that taking place? You got the president and the head of the CIA with your name in their mouth. Unbelievable. And then they even topped that. You know, the CIA director comes down to South Central L.A. to a address a panel of, uh, of people that want, want answers. You mm. know, they, they want answers and they come down there, man. If you see the documentary, you can see my crime me giving the blues. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we finna get... I think they come down... He come down that either that Saturday or that Sunday. And then we go into court Tuesday to get sentenced. Mm -hmm. And um, he sends one report to the courts that uh, the CIA had no involvement mm -hmm. with cocaine. But then when he talks to this panel, he's saying that the investigation is continuing. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to get a full report, well, you know, my crime, he gave it to him about that. Yeah. So, um, it all was exciting, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And, 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 you know, it's been an amazing ride. Mm hmm Reporter Gary Well, him coming in and helping out. Well, you know, uh, Gary was, was, wow, Gary was a tremendous dude. You know? Yeah. He, uh, you know, he's the one of the guys, well, he is the first guy to make them stop the forfeiture law. You know, uh, it was in California where the forfeiture laws and all that really started. And uh, they would pull you over, and if you had a joint in the car, they would take your car. Now, you could go to court, and the judge could say, well, that wasn't even marijuana that you found in that cigarette. Mm. You know, that was tobacco. It just looked like a marijuana joint. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing this case out. Will you still lose your car? And uh, Gary is the guy that, that, that spearheaded the move to stop law enforcement from being able to do those tactics. I don't know if you remember, you, you might be a little young for that, but mm -hmm. it was a time that uh, if your car was involved with drugs or suspected of being involved with drugs, they could forfeit it. That's crazy. Yeah, and, and even if you didn't go to court, you didn't get found guilty or, or none of that, mm -hmm. you know, they could still take your property. So those are the kind of tactics that, that these cowboys was, was, was pulling off, you know? What are your thoughts about the government when you see that kind of stuff going on? When you look up, you're a young man doing what you do, then you find out that the CIA and the government is behind what you're doing, but then you also see them forfeiting everybody's stuff. And locking you up. And locking you up at the same time. And my question is, who is really paying for the crime other than you? you yeah, out of control. That's what, you, that's what I call it, out of control. Radio Shouty! Shouty.